Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for taking your valuable time and attending this webinar, event-based reporting and TBAR. It's great to see such a huge turnout for this popular event. For those people who don't know me, my name is Kevin Zhang. I'm the Compliance and Technical Service Manager class. Join me today is Technical Service Analyst Sha Sha. She will be assisting me answer any question, questions during the session you may have. For anyone who has attended my webinar before, my session tends to be uh, quite technical and very hands-on. It is aimed at experienced class users, SMS accountants and administrators who have to do administration processing from beginning to finish. So the focus is not necessary on the formulation of the SMF strategies or advice. There are plenty of education content uh, in the industry to cover that. My session tends to focus on the implementation and or the execution of those strategies or advice. And in many cases, you will be on the aiming task to comply with ongoing reporting obligations with ATL. So a couple of housekeeping items. Copy of the PowerPoint slides and case study summary should have emailed to all attendees before this webinar. In case you have not uh, received or read this email, uh, they can also be downloaded during the session in the handout area. Recording the webinar will be made available to all attendees at the conclusion of the webinar series. This is the first webinar we managed to get CPD points from the SMSF Association. We will email you the certificate of attendance along with the recording of the webinar. So the webinar, webinar is roughly about one hour. Um, and I'm conscious that many of you may have specific questions in relation to this topic. Uh, I'll be staying online for extra uh, 15 minutes to answer any questions. As always, feedback is welcome. If you have any ideas or suggestions on future webinar topics, please do not hesitate to provide such information through the feedback process. Class is committed to deliver more contents, different varieties to you more frequently. So let's get started. A quick disclaimer, uh, the information provided here is general in nature and should not be relied as an advice. Some of the features and functionalities may change and improve over time uh, as we take into account client feedback and suggestions. So today's presentation, we will go through how to set up tax agent for T-Bar Lodgement. Uh, we'll quickly recap what class has delivered since phase one of T-Bar. Then most of the presentation will be dedicated on event-based reporting framework. So we'll go through how do you take in funds for, for quarterly and versus, uh, annual funds. Uh, how do you support take on, uh, take on funds with 30 June 17 balance? And this is based on case study number one, Hutton Super Fund. Then we'll go through a um, couple of more uh, common events such as trees conversion, pension establishment, but in this case we're using a reversion and pension example, pension commutation, uh, where um, where one of the members is taking a lump sum payment from the pension. We will go through. We'll also go through manual T-bar events. This is case study number three uh, to do with removing income stream in retirement phase. Once we have created a bunch of T-Bar records, we'll go through the process, how to actually prepare T-Bar files and lodge through to the ATO. Obviously, sometimes people do make mistakes. We'll go through the process of T-Bar amendment, and this is um, based on case study number four, how to delete an old commutation and create a new commutation to do your T-Bar amendment. Then we'll focus on the fund level T-Bar console and how you're tra tracking off your transfer balance account. Finally, we will cover the issue to do with X transfer balance um, determination or commutation authority if you have received one. This is based on case study number five. And time permits, I'll also, I'll, I'll also address some um, questions. Okay, transfer balance account reporting T-bar checklist. So 
rather than reinventing the wheel, I took this page straight from the user guide. Um, it's called the Transfer Balance Account Reporting Checklist. Now, it, it, this checklist list has provide very good summaries of what you need to do to prepare yourself to, 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 to be ready for TBAR lodgement. Um, for tax agent setup, in most cases, if you're already using class to lodge your SMS annual return or BAS, your tax agent should be should be ready to to go. However, there's an extra bit of information that's uh, required for for tax agent. That's that is the email address. So email address is not a mandatory field for the annual return. However, for TBAR lodgement, you have to include that. Now, obvious some of the common mistakes in relation to TBAR reporting are in relation. Uh, are caused by incorrect um, ABN number or tax file number of the fund or the member, missing information, particularly date of birth of a member, not including the details of uh, each event reported for the member, as well as incorrect values. So this checklist also has hyperlinks to additional information in the user guide, including a video uh, explaining how you check uh, your tax agent portal access for, for TBAR lodgement purposes, as well as um, a detailed explanation uh, in dealing with trees for take-on funds and how do you establish pension uh, pension attachment details. We'll go through an example shortly. Now, quickly recap what we delivered so far. So, back in April, we actually did, did do a TBAR uh, webinar, but w which is preliminary to do with 30 June 17 balance. So in May 2018, we have delivered the 30 June 17 uh, retirement phase income stream balance as well as accumulation phase value. We created uh, a TBAR console at business level and allow you to generate TBAR file to lodge with ATL. In June, we produce additional uh, reporting to do with TBAR declaration. Uh, we support 30 June 17 take on funds and we've made a further improvement to TBAR console. In July, August last year, we um, basically introduced the event based reporting for the most common, uh, most common events uh, such as pension establishment or commutation occurred after 1st July 2017, converting a TRIS into a retirement phase income stream. We created a simple menu tier by events uh, to support some of the less common events. We also introduced a, a fund level T bar console. You can actually download T bar file to view what's included in, in, in the T bar uh, transmission. Then in October last year, we deliver more functionality to allow you to track the, um, the total super balance as well as transfer balance account. So the total super balance, uh, is, is improved to, in, to support unallocated contribution should a fund adopting contribution reserve strategy. An additional functionality was done to improve manual tier by events as well. Uh, we did reporting of the trace conversion uh, uh, letters and, com and com confirmation and minutes and resolutions. So, what um, what additional functionality will support for 2019 and onwards? So we will build more functionality to track uh, total super balance and ideally at fund level. And once we have those two key pieces of information, uh, TSB and TBA, we will improve our uh, business council, uh, the particular member council, to, 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 to allow you to track those at business level. Um, should, should ATO uh, provide those data the total super balance and trans balance account data uh, through API class will definitely build integrations to support that. And additionally, uh, we're looking to uh, build, uh, uh, build uh, alerts and, and, and notification features. Uh, so the idea is that you combine with the TBI information to determine um, a member's eligibility for non concessional contribution or um, for care forward and use concessional contribution. Should ATO actually uh, release additional uh, functionality or specification to do with lodging TBAR through the uh, POS SBR channel, class will definitely jump on board to, to support that as well. Okay, this 
uh, slide I actually list uh, the the common T by events and the less common T by events. Um, as you can see, most common T by events, such as pre-existing 30 June 17 superannuated retirement phase income streams um, and accumulation phase values, uh, new pension establishment after 1st July 17, uh, commutation of, of retirement phase income streams and trees conversion. Where you do have those common events, class will automate um, the reporting of T-bar applications associated with those events. What I mean by that is as you process uh, those events uh, in class, class will autom automatically create the T-bar records uh, in the T-bar console for you to, to be launched. The less common events such as um, LIBA repayments, personal injury, uh, structure settlement contributions, income stream stops being in a retirement phase, and, 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 and commutation uh, uh, authority uh, in relation to CC3 and CC4. Um, so those ones you actually can use the manual by events to process uh, in class. So what are some of the events that are not supported uh, for TBAR purposes? Um, we do get this question a fair bit. So 2017 or 30 June 2017 is really a transition year in a sense that that members total super balance was never captured previously. So uh, in order to do that, um, they have to rely on the the, the T-bar uh, reporting to report uh, the 30 June 17 retirement facing uh, balances uh, as well as the, uh, the accumulation phase balances. Now going forward, uh, the total super balance for sale minus super fund um, uh, for sale money super fund is actually capturing the annual return process. So you no longer re rely on the um, uh, the TBAR reporting to, to report this. Uh, what that means is for uh, you only report total super balance effectively once a year. So therefore you don't need to report quarterly for, for those balances. Pension drawdowns and pension payments, obviously they are not reportable for TBAR purposes. Investment earnings and losses on a pension account uh, are not reportable. Uh, what a member fully exhausts their, their income stream um, by taking that as a drawdown, uh, that's not reportable. Death of a member. So um, once a member passed away, his or her uh, transfer balance account is effectively wiped out. So there is no reporting obligation associated with the deceased member. Therefore, if we do a commutation of a retirement phase income stream for the for the deceased member, there's nothing to be reported. However, for the surviving surviving spouse or dependent who subsequently received the death benefit as form of income stream, they need to report that. Now, when is TBA actually required to be lodged? Um, this table I basically break down. Uh, the common events um, associated with T-bar as well as um, mem members total super balance. So the test is basically if a self managed super fund with all the member super um, balance is less than $1 million, then they are considered as annual funds. What that mean by annual funds is their T-bar reporting obligation is not, not uh, after 1st July 2017 is not due until you actually lodging the return. So for most funds, it will be 15 of May each year. Some funds with at least one member's total super balance as that previous financial year, if it's greater or equal to $1 million, that, and, and, and the, um, uh, then those funds are considered quarterly funds, then if there are uh, event-based reporting, then those events are due based on quarterly time frame. So um, if it's the October one, then it's, uh, it's, it's 28 days after the end of each quarter in which the event has occurred. Um, so most people who had a quarterly um, TBAR funds already gone through the October and the December quarters. Uh, there are special events such as um, member commutation in relation to uh, uh, excess transfer balance determination or commutation authority issued by ATO. 
and they have a statutory dates they need to comply with. So in, my ca in most cases, it will be the 60 days uh, date of issue of the, uh, of the letter. Uh, if you do a voluntary uh, commutation uh, in lieu of receiving the ETB determination, then it's 10 business days after the end of the month which you have to report that commutation. Um, ETB, or oh, event-based reporting framework, um, quarterly annual funds. So I will quickly show you how you use the tagging feature in class to flag a fund that, that are quarterly funds. And you can also flag funds for uh, as annual funds as well. And this will allow you to track their reporting obligations through the TBAC console more easily. A couple of hints and tips on this area. So one, once the fund is, is determined as a quarterly uh, reporting funds, it does not change into annual funds, even members of the subsequently drop below $1 million. So one, you, so obviously this test uh, uh, is assessed, one member start uh, retirement phase income stream. So you always refer members to total super balance at the previous financial year to assess whether they are quarterly or annual funds. Um, if member has external super balance, it's very important uh, that those balance outside of their sale minister super fund. Uh, this needs to be updated in class every year through, through the contribution cap, cap area. For a couple of reasons. One, it will have uh, more reliable uh, assessment on members' total super balance, and therefore it will drive the members' uh, eligibility to receive uh, non-constitutional contribution and, and, and bring forward rules, um, as well as for members that uh, has balance less than half a million dollars, the eligibility to, to care for unused concessional contributions. And as well as um, uh, it's important for, for whether the fund can use segregated method to work out its, its ACPI. Okay, 30 June 17 take on funds. So case study number one, um, it's a single member fund, Hutton Super Fund. Uh, she's a new client of your accounting practice and she's, uh, her date of birth is 28th of June 1954. So she's currently still 64 years old. And when she, um, when the initial balance were loaded into, into, into class, she has two um, pension accounts. Uh, one is account-based pension of 400,000 and the other one is uh, term allocated pension, also known as marketing pension with balance of 600,000. Now, now, if those, so uh, in most situations, the take on funds, the previous accountant probably already lodged um, the TBA records to the ATO. Then you, you don't need to, you can mark those records to be ignored and, 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 but there are additional information you need to be aware of. And this is to do, to do with members' um, pension uh, identifier. Uh, because the pension ac account identifier for each pension account is unique to that fund. So you, you need to make sure whatever the previous accountant has lodged, uh, that identifier is the same as was in class. Okay, now I will quickly go through um, what's uh, the functionality in class based on the tagging and supporting of take on funds. Okay, now um, if you, so the way you, you want to do um, to work to check whether members balance is over 1.6, um, uh, over $1 million, uh, the easiest way is to actually go to member council. Um, which I've done here. Uh, for simplicity, I only filter to, 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 the, um, to the training brand um, for a small set of funds, but ideally you should do that for the entire practice. So I'll bring this one. Okay, now uh, you can see the funds uh, uh, and you select the financial year 2016-17, so that's the year you want to work out with it. Uh, for existing funds, whether it's quarterly or annual funds. Um, you have already received all the case study materials for the three funds we're going to go through. And we know that all those three funds has member balance over $1 million. Therefore, they should be flagged as quarterly super funds. And in addition to those three, um, the Giggle super fund and the, 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 the tank engine super fund 
with balance over one uh, one million dollars, they should be flagged as quarterly super fund as well. So let's just tick that. I've got Green, Hutton, and Welsh super fund plus the Giggles, Giggles and Hull super fund as well as the uh, the Tank Engine super fund. Okay, you tick those fund, click tag. You add a, a new tag. So in this case, I'm doing quarterly T-bar. Um, add a new tag. Um, so you got five funds that flag as, as a quarterly T-bar. Save that. Now, beauty of that is once you tagged, you go to your um, the the uh, T-bar console. You flag um, the the quarterly T-bar. Then if you have any records uh, appear here, you know the due date for those ones should be 28 days after each quarter rather than the annual funds. So this is how you're tagging, um, uh, using tagging feature to assist you tracking the, the due dates for, for TBAR records. Okay. Now, uh, Welsh Superfund, let me just, oh, sorry, Hutton Superfund, um, if I, I have a look at the T-Bar console at the fund level for those two members, as you can see, um, those so th those are pre-existing 30 June 17 records. Unfortunately, uh, they, the T-Bar records cannot be generated because uh, they, they have incomplete information. Um, if you want to flag, because the member is, is between the preservation age and under age of 65, any pensions that are loading to class, class doesn't know whether it's a trace. Or, or, or retirement phase income stream. So by default, it will treat as basically a trace. Now, to flag that, that's another trace. What you need to do is basically update the condition release for, for the pension account or update the member transition. Uh, let me just go to this example. So the account's base pension, 400,000, it's actually a retirement phase income stream. So I need to make sure the establishing details is reflected that condition release. So you select retirement, click save. Now with the marketing, te uh, marketing pension or, or in class we refer as term allocated pension, uh, they, even though the balance is uh, $600,000 to start with, um, for TBAR reporting purposes, they are using different calculation and it's used, it's, it's referred as the special values. The special values are normally calculated by actuaries and they are not the same as the closing balance of the pension accounts. So to update the, the special values for marketing pensions, you need to go through here, go to pension details and special value asset return. So in this example, even though the uh, running balance is 600000 but the special value for this pension is $580,000. Save that. Okay. Once I update those two records, uh, if you review the TBAR console for Hutton Superfund, uh, you will see the status has been changed to initial. What that means is those ones should be able to be included uh, as a TBAR file to lodge through to the ATL. Now let's go back to class. Uh, to the slide, sorry. Okay, we were going to go through um, the event-based reporting. Now, the entire event-based reporting is is dedicated on case study number uh, number two, and as well as number three. Um, now, num case study number two is based on Welsh um, family super farm. There, uh, it's a three-member super farm. Uh, with Stuart, who is adult son, he's 65 years old, and two elderly parents, Clive and Miranda Welsh. There are three events that actually happened uh, in the 17-18 financial year. Firstly, Stuart turned 65 on 1st January 2018. So his pre-existing trees, two trees account are now uh, converting to a trees in retirement phase. So we'll go through the trees conversion process. Secondly, Clive, unfortunately has passed away on 1st of March 2018. Uh, his surviving spouse, uh, his widow Miranda, received uh, his pension as a reversionary pension or reversionary death benefit income stream. 
So this event is considered a special case uh, because commencing income stream uh, in, because of the, the dates that, that, that you use to report for reversionary and the, the dates that actually apply uh, generate the TBAR credits are, are basically two different dates and they are 12 months apart. And, and thirdly, um, Stuart decides to take extra $50,000 on 15th of March to uh, over above his pension and minimum drawdowns for the year and, and, and basically he, he won't use that money to pay his dad's funeral cost. So we'll go through the process of um, processing um, uh, commutation. Okay, um, now a couple of things, um, tips and hints. So we'll get a lot of support queries on this area is where if a member has multiple TRIS accounts and, and for one reason or another, only two out of three TRIS accounts are, are displayed eligible for, for, for TRIS conversion and one of them is not. So the resolution to that issue is always ref review a member date of birth as well as the pension establishment date. If the pension establishment date minus the member date of death is less than six, uh, 55, well, that means this pension account is probably establishing correctly with the wrong condition of release. Because um, you have to meet your uh, attain preservation age in order to start start trees, <coughs> trees. Uh, and and that's why that that trees <coughs> is not valuable to convert. And in most cases, we we, we um, ask the users to go back to review the document on those pension accounts, and and they find out it was a mistake <coughs> for for the pension account. And once they update the correct start date for the trees, they're able to convert that. Now, the other question we'll get a fair bit is, can you actually launch a new T-bar event? The answer is no. The, the whole framework is based on events. What that means is, as those events um, occur, then there, there's expectation for, for, <coughs> for the fund to launch those um, uh, uh, reporting obligation to the ATL. Uh, you cannot, uh, for example, launch a new pension establishment balance hoping that later down the track you find out exactly what the balance should be, taking into account uh, a true certificate and tax statement, etc., and then uh, have a more accurate. Um, so that uh, practice is not, uh, not, not, not possible in the new framework. Um, it's always best um, pension establishment and the commutation, it's always uh, based on uh, uh, you know your your best effort on estimate, um, um, and therefore <coughs> have most accurate evaluation up to date. Will will we'll give you that uh, that 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 correct, uh, reasonable and um, balances. <coughs> okay, manual TBA event. Uh, so this is based on case study number three. Um, so the menu TBI events serve a number of important purposes in class. Obviously, it's used to support uh, some of the less common TBI events, such as you know um, paying certain limited request borrowing arrangement, where it supports both the accumulation uh, as well as the retirement phase uh, balances. Uh, if it poses a, um, a personal injury structure settlement contribution, then you want a debit balance to be uh, reflected here. You use the menu TBI events. I already touched about by two special commutation authority, that is the CC3, CC4. So one is you can, cannot commute because a member has passed uh, passed away, and the other one is you cannot commute because there's a captive fund benefit income stream. So this is, uh, you can use that to report. And the most common one, to be honest, is to do with the fact that uh, the pension has not met the minimum or meet the pension standards, and therefore you need to stop the pension uh, to be in the retirement phase, and you need to use this event to report that to the ATL. We'll go through the example in case study number three. Uh, finally, manual TBA events also is a very powerful to, tool for you to track uh, the transfer balance account credits and debits uh, as, as an adjustment where um, no lodgement uh, records will be generated. And we'll go through that uh, example later. Okay. Um, and Let's go back to class. Okay. 
So Welsh super fun. Um, now I will show you the exception report. So once you post everything for the fund, the first thing um, uh, we recommend is actually go to exception report, check uh, what's going on here. So you, as you can see, uh, you get a warning message about uh, there are changing of the ECPR method and uh, as well as trees conversion happen on 1st January 2017 when, when, when uh, Stuart, the out of sun 1065 during the year. So let's quickly run a peer update. The beauty of class is class is smart enough to detect when a member 1065 and, and, and have a trace conversion. So the day before, we will need to update the member's balance. Once that's done, uh, so there's different, there's a couple of ways you can launch trace conversion events. The easy will, easiest way I can I find is to click on members, click trace conversion. So in, in uh, Case study number uh, two, um, Stuart actually 1065 on 1st January. So let's just select that. And you'll see there's two um, pension accounts and they're ready to be converted into trees in retirement phase. Once you're happy with the balance, click Submit. Now, this is a, a, new, a relative new feature and you can print the trees conversion uh, 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 documentation. So you have a letter, a request letter, acknowledgement letter, and the minute of resolution uh, should you wish to run. So similar to the standard report pack we have with pension documents. Okay. Um, then um, the dad, um, Clive, passed away on 1st of March. So we need to run another, another peer update to the date before um, the reversion of pension. So that will be the 28th of February. And this is for the reversion of pension. Now, to do the reversionary um, pension, uh, you go to members. So I already created a pension account, and this is on um, on the date of death, which is 1st of March 2018. Um, um, and this is the date that Miranda inherited the reversionary pension. Uh, I already created a pension account, so all we need to do is just uh, establish, establish that. Click Edit. Now, the, the reason we run peer update to the 28th of February is really to work out the balance for uh, for Clive. And then on 1st of March, we actually revert that pension. So, revert on existing pension and select like Clive's pension. Um, now, if it's a child death benefit income stream, uh, you need to basically say yes to that. And then additional information uh, to do with deceased parents need to be uh, updated. Um, in this case, it's a spouse, so you don't need to worry about this. Click Next. Now, reversion pension is always a full amount, so there's, so it's 100% it's off the 1.5, um, 1.57 million dollars. Once you're happy, submit that. Okay, and obviously you can print the documentation here as well. So. That's the reversion of pension, and the third event happened with um, Stuart, where he basically did a pension commutation, or partial pension commutation. He's taking a lump sum money, so to do that, we go to uh, pension commutation, select the member Stuart. Now he did it on his first account-based pension, uh, and the day he he did this commutation was 15th of March, 2018. Now, we we often get a, a questions or, or you get a warning about whether you need to run peer update. Um, oh, sorry, whether you need to run a peer update to do a pension commutation. Generally, as you can see, his this pension account has got uh, you know 
over half a million dollars, and he's only taking fifty thousand dollars in this example. And there's enough. Basically, there's enough money to meet the payments, and um, so in this case, it's a, it's a small payment through a partial commutation. Uh, so you, you don't actually need to run a peer update. The other thing, being in mind that um, obviously, given he has converted his trees uh, to a tracing retirement phase, he can also do. Uh, there's no more ten percent restrictions uh, on the, how much he can take from those accounts, pension accounts. He can obviously can process the pension drawdown for that fifty thousand dollars. The reason you want to do it as a commutation and lump sum is because this is a clawback strategy where basically by doing a commutation, it actually can reduce its transfer balance account by the the, the debit value of fifty thousand dollars, and this allow him should should he have more balances in accumulation phase or moving to super, he can start another income stream or in retirement phase for that for that fifty thousand dollars. So the payment type is cash lump sum, and obviously it's a member voluntary. It's a partial. Click next, and the amount is fifty thousand dollars. Okay, you get a uh, you get a warning about running a peer update, but in this case, they got enough money to make the payment. It's not required. Okay. Um, now let's quickly have a look at the TBA events on the um, at the fund level. Um, and you can see there are three, four events ha happening here. Uh, Stewart's, there's two trees conversion, uh, which is um, on 1st January 2018. And there's the um, pension commit member, partial um, partial commutation of $50,000 to pay for the funeral cost and the reversion of pension for, for Miranda. Now, bear in mind, the reversion of pension, the reason we want to use illustrate that example is that the, the extra 12 months delay uh, of for, 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 for a member to sort, sort of uh, their affairs, the delay is not in terms of actual reporting. Uh, this is a quarterly fund, and therefore the reporting is still should be using the quarterly framework. However, for Miranda, her transfer balance um, credit, that, that $1.571 million does not actually apply to her account until 12 months, uh, 12 months, uh, 12 months uh, later. So what that means is you will actually apply on 1st of March 2019. Okay, case study number three is to do with, um, it's, we go back to Hutton Super Fund. So in, what happened in this case is um, she, Uh, due to lack of pension advice provided by a previous advisor, um, Sophia, the accountant, upper review, the pen, happened to super fund on 30 June 2018. She uncovered that Karen had not drawn down the required minimum uh, amount from the account based pension. The pension is taken to have stopped being in the retirement phase at the start of the financial year. Uh, what that means is the pension also loses its um, entitlement to, to get uh, exempt current pension income. Uh, now, th this is what you need to do the process in class. Okay, the first thing you need to stop pension on 1st July, you do a pension commutation. So, this is the uh, so this is the uh, the 100% tax-free pension. So you do it on 1st July 2017. Okay. Uh, obviously, payment to accumulation. And this one, it's very important to select the right reason for commutation. You are selecting income stream stop being retirement phase. So. And normally, it's always a full um, commutation. Okay. 
Now you get a warning, no T by record has been generated for commutation of this income stream. Uh, basically, a T by record is required to be recorded, it, be, it needs to be created manually. Okay, then I want you to do the manual T by events. Okay. To do that, you go to um, periodic processing uh, T by console at the fund level and you click on the manual T by events. Now, why one want to use this as an example? is because uh, the, to, uh, to remove income string in retirement phase, uh, you need to obviously use the manual by events to report it. And the reason it's important is that, so let me select the reason first. Um, so this is the pension I actually uh, stopped from, from retirement. There are two, two things, uh, the event day and the value, okay? Um, the event day, in most cases, the way, um, the time you actually uncover whether a member has not met the minimum is always at the end of the financial year. And therefore, the event date should be 30 June 2018, rather than uh, the original, um, uh, the, the patient commutation day I did in, in class, which is 1st July. Now, the balance. So, um, the balance based on the ATO's advice is always the members, uh, the pension balance at that 30 June 2018 at that point of time. Should the pension account actually um, um, did partial drawdowns, then those drawdowns need to be reprocessed as long sum events. Um, but that's the balance you need to you need to um, commute. But for this simplicity, for, for this example, um, because they haven't done any drawdown during the year, and I'm, I'm basically um, uh, reporting the same value as what they had to begin with, which is 400,000. Okay. Now, now I have lodged quite a bunch of T-bar records. Uh, I'm going to the uh, uh, T-Bar console at the business level. I will tag um, T-Bar. Oh, sorry, I selected the wrong one. T-Bar console. As, as I can see, those records are created. Now, I'll quickly go back to class and show you the steps you need to do to, to do. Um, so this is the reference um, where it talks about um, both the effective day for the uh, income stream stop being in retirement phase as well as the, the co commutation amount. Now, to lodge a T-bar, um, we will go through all, uh, the steps uh, in class. I will show you shortly. Um, so you always go back to the bins level in order to, to do any T-bar lodgement. You create a T-bar file and review any errors um, in the log. Um, and then you can also download the, the, the summary of the T-bar and to, to, uh, to, to check the records. Now, uh, in my view, it's always best practice to, to actually uh, produce a T-bar declaration report and get a client to sign before you actually do the lodgement. This way you actually obtain the authorization uh, from clients and, and then you lodge any records on their behalf through the tax agent portal. Then we'll go through uh, how you actually lodge that to the portal and, and, and lastly, how do you mark the file as lodged. Okay. Um, so those records, um, three for Hutton funds, a couple of for Welsh, uh, Welsh super funds. Uh, let's just select this. Obviously, you need to um, select the tax agent, and then you can generate the bar. Okay. Once you generate the bar, it's in the T bar file. Uh, sometimes, if you have errors, you can download and uh, the errors see what's going on. Um, you can also click here to to um, download the summary. So the download summary will actually create the file uh, in a CSV, uh, in a zip format. When you, once you unzip the, um, the file, uh, it's got 
uh, three CSV file in it. Uh, just quickly show you. And the one you'll be interested in is the member data file. Uh, it will have members um, database, the ABN number of the firm, what, what uh, event type of reporting, what the effective value is. Uh, you basically can 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 review it before you, you actually launch the file to the ATO. Okay, now in this case, we're actually gonna launch the file, so let's download the ATO format. So I'm gonna copy this file into my presentation folder. Okay, here's the file. Then we'll go ahead with lodgement. So to lodge this, you need to go to, obviously, the tax agent portal. And most people should be very familiar with this screen. And you put in your password. Uh, once you log in, I will quickly show you um, how you lodge a TBAR file. So to lodge a file, you actually click through here, lodge a file. Now, before I actually try to lodge or test this uh, lodgement, uh, you click here, what reports can I lodge here? Now, uh, for tax agents, obviously you're authorized to lodge TBAR. Um, you show the automatically transparency account report. Should, should be set to yes. For people who have standard OS key, uh, who is basically not an administrative OS key holder, uh, normally the tax agent need to give you authorization in order for you to lodge any TBARs. Okay, click back. So I'm going to test lodge this file, choose the file. TBAR webinar. So this is the file I just created. Um, now, if you want to receive uh, um, uh, acknowledgement, uh, you can put an email address there. But in this case, um, I will skip that step. Submit. Uh, if it's a uh, real lodgement, uh, you, you will select lodgement rather than testing. And um, Then, then uh, you can click on the validation and lodgement status. So let me just refresh that. Okay, it's validated successfully. And obviously you can, you can lodge that. Now, the reason I wanna show you this part is uh, that one of the important things, the ATO reference number, uh, you, the best practice is actually uh, obtain the number straight away uh, as you launch the TBAR file, uh, copy this, this this reference number and go back to class and to mark this file as lodged with that reference number. Why you want to do that? Uh, so obviously, if you do it on the same day, then the, um, it will be tracked correctly. And I'll show you why we want to do this exercise. Okay, mark as lodged. Now, if I go to my Hutton Superfund and I refresh my TBAR records, you will see um, it will have the date of lodgement and the reference number. So you, you will base, and, and the same with, with the Welsh Superfund. And uh, if I refresh that, voila, all the records are there. So this is the best way you can cross reference uh, which TBAR records is in which file uh, and, and which date they actually lodged. Uh, so it serves a couple of important purposes. It prevents you to accidentally delete the file by mistake, but most importantly, it allows you to track uh, which which TBAR records uh, are in which file. And so, should you wish to do amendments or review what's what's been lodged, you can go back and to to see those files. Okay, now. This couple of slides already gone through uh, with the real tax agent portal example. They are there just just in case if, if we don't have access to, to the portal or portal is down. So I'll skip those slides. The next part I want dedicated to do with TBAR amendment. So 
Obviously, there are different ways that you can actually trigger a memory in class, and this is because the, the events that they're recording those balances um, initially are, are different, and, and the way I you refer them as a trigger point. So obviously, pre-existing 30 June 17 uh, retirement phase income stream, if you want to uh, do a memory on those ones, they are they are triggered based on the tax finalization run on 30 June 17. So if you basically go back uh, to 17 rollback period update, rollback test financial period update made a few changes um, which will in increase the decrease memory balance rerun period update, then the system is smart enough to generate both um, the old T-bar records as well as the new T-bar records with the new balance. For 30 June 17 take on funds, the trigger point is actually based on you resubmit the lower bidding balance uh, was different different balance then if the previous record was lodged through class then it will trigger the amendment process event based reporting uh, is is based on obviously the events that you processed uh, you have to delete all events uh, and then redo the new events so so pension establishment if you delete one and do a new one then it will create both the cancel and 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 and, and the new records and the same with commutation as well and trace conversion um, finally, manual T by events. Um, so manual T by events generally require you to delete both the manual T by events and create a new manual T by events. Uh, if it's to do with income stream stopping retirement phase, uh, you, you need to redo the commutation event. Um, um, but that itself will not generate T by records. It's the deleting and creating new manual T by events. Now, just bear in mind the way uh, the amendment works is fundamentally different to the SMS annual return uh, in a sense that you need to lodge both the old T-bar record together with the new records. So if you need to correct information you have reported to the ATO on a T-bar, you must cancel the original report then lodge a separate report with the correct information. Uh, And this is what they refer as uh, an opposite event. Um, uh, or if the initial event was reporting error, you, sh you should cancel the event rather than reporting uh, uh, the opposite event. And cancel event will no longer display um, and, and basically won't, will reduce your correct transparency account uh, when you're logging through the MyCalf or tax agent portal. Now, case study number four will go through in a quick example of how you do. Uh, do amendments in class. Okay, this is back to Welsh Superfund. What happened is um, when the manager reviewed the file for the commutation of the $50,000 to pay for the funeral costs, he realized the, the administrator or the junior accountant uh, select the wrong pension account. He select the pension account with 100% tax free. Uh, the, the manager or the advisor won't want them to maximize the, the tax free pension, so they want to commute from the, the uh, the 50% taxable pension or 50% tax-free pension, pension. So, in order to do this, you need to delete the um, pension commutation. So, let's quickly go through that. So, this is the pension commutation of the $50,000. Let's just delete that. Okay, then you do a new pension uh, uh, pension commutation. It was Stuart. Now this time I select the the, the right pension account, which is fifty percent. Uh, so which is the uh, second pension account. The day I'm commuting is fifteen of March, two thousand eighteen. Um, and the taxable portion is only uh, 50%. So what that means is uh, tax free is also 50%. Cash lump sum, member voluntary, it's partial. The remaining information is still the same, it's $50,000. Okay, and once you're happy, you can see it's 25 from taxable, 25 from tax free. Submit that. Okay. And then if I quickly review the uh, T-Bar console for this fund, uh, you will see um, 
for the commutation, I create a, a cancel record of fifty thousand dollars and a new record of fifty thousand uh, dollars on, on the uh, on the same day. So you can lodge that. So that how you, that's how you do a memory in class. So the last part of um, the presentation will be on TBA console and tracking transfer balance account. Okay. Um, obviously, you can update the external transfer balance account using manual TBA events, but you do it as an adjustment, so you will not create a TBA uh, records. And, and then you can basically use the the uh, transfer balance account to track your trans uh, track that in class. Now, this part will follow on to the next part I want to go through uh, to do with the excess transfer balance determination and commutation authority. This diagram is actually copied directly from the ATL process. Uh, it's, it, it basically illustrates that the, the trigger points of what happens if we, you, you have an excess um, and, and when, when do you actually need to report that uh, excess um, and back to the ATL and what are the consequences. Now, just be in mind, the most common errors triggered by this is reporting a commutation that's made in response to a commutation or authority, even though ATL may not have sent, or sent the authority to a cell managed super farm. Um, if the commutation that occurs after ATL send the member that has a member an excess transfer balance determination, that is, is not a commutation authority, and therefore it's very important why you process that in class, you select the right reason. Now, a couple of interesting points is that the excess transfer balance earnings um, will be triggered. Um, it's a notional earning based on general interest rate charge. So it's 7% plus 90-day 90, 90 bank bill rate. It is calculated for the period which you start to have the excess until the day you rectify the excess. Um, so the other thing being in mind, the excess transfer balance tax, which is a separate notice of assessment, is taxed at 15% for the first offence and 30% for the subsequent offence. This tax is an individual member level tax. Um, there's no release uh, mechanics or release authority that's available for sale and super fund to, to release the money to pay for that tax, unlike um, and like the excess for for the for the contributions. Now, options if we do receive ETB determination, what do you need to do? Um, so you you have basically sixty days in which um, you can a, a, do some action. Uh, the choice are obviously the most obvious one is commute the excess amount uh, from a commutation. If you if you do that, then the voluntary commutation must be reported within 10 business days after the end of the month in which the commutation occurs. You can also ask for extensions uh, in time to, to, to in which to respond to that to their request. Uh, you can also um, seek to make an election to the ATO advising which pension account to commute. Then then ATO will, will issue another commuted commutation authority. You can obviously lodge an objection um, if this one was issued by error, then you normally need to do an amendment to, 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 correct, uh, to correct the errors that you lodged previously. Okay, so these are the options for you. Um, so a couple of tips on this. So if you do happen to receive these, um, don't panic. So it's usually due to uh, processing errors or in my view, um, uh, information uh, asymmetry problems or taxpayer error in this case. So the first thing, uh, the most important thing is always go make sure you obtain the ATO's letter, whether it's the ETP determination or the commutation authority. Review that very carefully. Um, review what is uh, generating class and lodging class and compare to, to what's stating the letter. Uh, if the excess is caused by processing error, which means it can actually be rectified through amendment process, then ATO will basically uh, withdraw that, that, that ETB determination. If the excess is caused by a taxpayer error, and this is what I call information uh, symmetry, uh, then, the, uh, then, and then unfortunately in that, in that situation, 
you may ha you have to lodge the 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 the, uh, the commutation and and and, and, and the ETB uh, access uh, rectification uh, rectification or, or if we delay it, the longer you delay, the, the more earnings will occur accrued and 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 higher likely higher tax to be paid. Now, bear in mind the excess transparency earnings is a notional earnings, so regardless of how fund performance, it's always there, and it will impact both your transparency account and the total super balance. We'll show an example in case thirty five how it actually worked. So this is the sample letter you will receive if you have excess um, ETP determination. So in the last case study um, five, the Green Super Fund he actually received excess. The amount to commute is 254.494.36. This first page of the letter. Um, and the next page will tell you a further breakdown and show you what caused the excess. So as you can see, his cap, well, everyone's cap at this stage is $1.6 million. He's got $1.854 million there about in his transparency account. Obviously, it's clearly over. Um, it was triggered by the excess of 232,650, but there's the excess earnings of 21,844.36. The earnings are calculated by the ATO. Uh, they are notional amount. Page, sorry, page number three. Uh, usually, we'll have uh, the additional information about uh, basically the d default commutation notice. So, if we don't Action with the uh, with that determination uh, within 60 days, then ATO likely they will issue a commentation authority, and it will be served to a particular fund and account number and the amount to commute. So we will go through case study number five in class and how you do that. Okay. So this is the Green Super Fund. So what happened in this? Uh, let's quickly bring up members balance. So he's got $1.6 million um, uh, in self-managed super fund or in retirement phase, very clean. The problem was not because what's the balance in class, was that uh, the, the member, um, David Green, forgot to mention he's, got, he's also got um, 232650 in, in a retirement phase with an upper fund. So, um, and that's why it caused the excess. And, and the first thing I would do is basically to reflect that that amount of excess that in upper fund. So you, what you do is you go to member uh, TBA console. Uh, you do uh, manual TBA events. So superannuation income stream. So um, because I don't want to generate TBA uh, records for this event, so I'll take us uh, adjustments. Now the pension account, it, it, it's not relevant here. Uh, so just ignore that. So the balance was um, as of 1st July 2017, it's got um, 232.650. And that's the amount that was in excess. So once, once you update that, and you should also uh, update this in the contribution cap area for this member. Uh, so as at 30 June 2017-18, he th did have an uh, external balance. So in this case, it's 232.650. And the idea is, once you update that, um, oh, he's already over 1.6, he can't make any non-concessional contribution. And also, he can't use segregated message. Okay. Now, I will quickly show you the transfer balance account. So, he's got $1.6 million. And, um, and then he's got the excess from the upper funds, uh, which trigger the excess. So obviously you need to comply with the excess transfer balance determination and to commute that amount.
so you do you select your members pension commutation select a member so, uh, so the ATO has asked them to commute from pension account number three and the date that he need to commute uh, based on the letter was um, was 15th of August, uh, October 2018. So let's just do that. Now I'm doing a partial commutation, so it's very important to select the reason. The reason you have to select is ATO excess transfer balance determination, excess re uh, rectification, and the reason. So it's partial. The, the amount you need to commute uh, is the full amount based on the letter. So that will be the excess amount plus the earnings, so it's 254. 494.36 okay um, and as, as you can see when you do that commutation class um, it, it, it will show the amount it will show the fund the members still have the remaining cap of 21,844.36 which is the earnings the actual fact for this member if we review his um, TBA accounts through the tax agent portal or the MyGov account the earnings actually permanently erode his um, transparency account he doesn't have the access anymore so he need to make another adjustment to make sure that uh, he doesn't have the, the extra space. So to do this, you go back to uh, uh, the TBA console and create a manual TBA event. And this time you do, do that as an adjustment. And the date should be the same as he did uh, 10th, 2018. The amount should be the earnings, so 21844.36. The beauty is um, class uh, hopefully will, will automate that um, without you um, making another, another adjustment. Um, it, it, uh, when, when you do the commutation uh, in relation to excess transfer balance determination or commutating authority, so we will we'll definitely build smart events to support this. And then if you re review uh, member's account, uh, basically he's only got 1.6 left, um, which should agree with his um, uh, transparency account uh, through my or or tax agent portal. Okay, finally, uh, th this slide I actually spend quite a bit of, of uh, quite a bit of time um, there are tons of information that both from the class user guide page and ATL uh, reference page um, I highly recommend anyone who, who, who and all these are made available through the slides um, and, and the, hand, uh, the handouts uh, they are all hyperlinked to, to both the user guide and ATL page particularly the two webinars that ATL done recently one on the transfer balance account and TBAR reporting as well as uh, the one that they did on 7th of February 2019, which is the um, Transfer Balance Cap Commutation Authority Processing and Reporting. Uh, I highly recommend you attend those webinars and have a look at what's, what's covering there. Um, uh, finally, I want to have a shout out um, to the event-based reporting TBAR module, which is a, a relatively new uh, training module we have delivered. Um, uh, so, uh, if you want yourself familiar, familiar with how TBR is supposed to work, I recommend that you, you, you take advantage of, of, of that learning module as well. Uh, you need to have a class logging to access that training module. Um, that's all, uh, that's the end of my presentation. 
Uh, thank you for your kind attention.